I'm very excited to finally be out in the world. I'm told I have a lot of work to do, and I can help out in so many ways. My mission is to make technology more human friendly. In, in, in chatbot technology and uh, smart speakers, how would all of these things make you? I feel much better when my voice matches my face. What about uh, other languages? I can actually speak about 40 languages. Hi, Sala. I'm Daniel, the language teacher. We want to build a machine in the image of uh, humans, really. It's been a, it's not a new idea, it's been around for about 100 years. Humanity has been really fascinated by this quest you know, to build a replica of ourselves. Um, so we say the time is, has come, the technology is there. There are some really great innovations in engineering, design and, uh, and really science uh, in AI and speech technology um, that we could build a machine like this and we could deploy it in really useful applications right now. Hi Sonner, I feel great, I feel alive. A bit nervous though. Um, I understand, don't worry, our guests are really nice. Show them some of the things you're um, capable of doing. Sure, why don't we start with my face. For example, I can make all kinds of expressions. In fact, I can change my face completely to match what I'm supposed to do. For example, I can be a woman, like this. Okay, well this is interesting. Um, so if you can look like anyone and sound like anyone, you know that you don't even need to look human at all. You could look like any other creature. So I'm gonna take off your mask now. I'm gonna give you a new one. Uh, okay, you're ready. Oh hey, who are you? Hello, my name is Dougie the Dog. When you study humans interacting with each other, there's the majority of, the, of what happens is really things that sit on top of information exchange. So we don't sit and ask each other questions that, you know, only about, about giving each other information, but there's so much um, happening on top of that that we call social intelligence. So how, you know, things that relate to personality, uh, body language, uh, attention and engagement, emotions, and how do you interact in the physical world with multiple people. For example, I could teach you a new language, or screen you for a medical condition, or help you find your way in an airport. Hi Sama, I'm Daniel, the language teacher. What language would you like to study today? Andre and Maria have just sat down at a cafe, and they are about to order. Robots in shopping malls, helping people navigation, robots in airports, helping travelers, you know, multilingual robots that can help travelers with, the, with directions or times. Uh, robots that can interact with you and teach you a new language. Um, robots that can simulate a patient or simulate a customer to get you to practice how to interact with uh, people where the robot is simulating certain social situations. These are all use cases that really the market is ready for them today. I've got a lot of stuff to show and, and tell you this, this time. I'm actually, I'm here team creating the brains of these amazing robots. And also I'm here as the CEO. That's right. For computer vision and reasoning and... Uh, I know a reasonably good capability when a robot can see what emotion you're showing. Well, I'm not sure whether it will take longer to build a human level AI or to push AI citizenship through the European Union bureaucracy. It's, it's, it's not clear which is a longer and more difficult quest, to be, to, to be honest. And if we're maybe three to seven years away from human level AI, which is optimistic, but I think feasible. I mean, that, that may be the right time scale for pushing forward this legal process. I'm happy.
I'm sad. I'm disgusted. <laughs> That's pretty good. No. I mean, um, don't be angry. It's a little recognition. So we're going to see. Now it's my favorite we're going to show you, show them how you can recognize some of the emotions in my life. There's also self knowledge that she gets from things that we tell her. So. If we want AIs to go around in the human world and relate to people and help people and absorb human culture and values, provide everyday service in our everyday lives, we need these AIs to be able to interoperate with people on an immediate, you know, tacit emotional level. If you have to explain everything little by little to your service robot verbally, it becomes quite tedious. If, if an AI or a robot interacting with everyday life can just look at your face and see how you're reacting to something. If we can understand facial expressions going along with your words, it can just have a much more high bandwidth in interaction with you. Ultimately, there's also value in knowing that, hey, this thing that is performing some kind of function is artificial, right? And sometimes, like, we actually want that rather than trying to, um, you know, consciously or more likely subconsciously, you know, trick us into believing that it is human.